Hi all! Today, we are going to continue still on the same chapter that is on cell division. The content standard for today's lesson is 6.3 meiosis. The learning standards are 6.3.1, state the meaning of meiosis, 6.3.2, Identify types of cells that undergo meiosis. 6.3.3 State the necessity of meiosis. 6.3.4 Explain the stages of meiosis in the correct order. 6.3.5 Draw and label the cell structure in each stage of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and cytokinesis. The success criteria for today's lesson are the first one, state the meaning of meiosis. Second, identify types of cells that undergo meiosis. Third, state the necessity of meiosis. And fourth, explain each stage of meiosis. Now, what is meiosis? Meiosis is the process of cell division to produce gametes that occur in reproductive organs. The reproductive organ is testis in male and ovaries in females. Gametes contain half the number of chromosomes that is haploid compared to the parent cell, which is diploid. Why is meiosis important? Now, first, meiosis is important to form gametes through the process what we call as gametogenesis. Second, Meiosis is to ensure that the diploid chromosome number of organisms that carry out sex reproduction is always maintained from one generation to the next because gamete is only haploid. Third, meiosis can produce genetic variation in the same species. This ensures the survival of the species. Unlike mitosis, meiosis is divided into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. For meiosis 1, it is divided into four substages that are prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. Still the same as before, that is P met. For meiosis 2, it is also further divided into four substages for phase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2, also denoted as p -met. Now, we go to each stage of meiosis. So, the first one is prophase 1. During prophase 1, chromatin shortens, thickens, and forms visible chromosomes. Pairing of homologous chromosome is known as synapsis. It will form bivalent or called as tetrad. This is what we call as homologous chromosome. One come from maternal, the other one come from paternal. The crossing over process that is an exchange of genetic material between non-identical chromatids takes place. Crossing over will produce a combination of genes that are new in chromosome. The point where the crossing over occurs is called as chiasma. At the end of prophase 1, the nuclear membrane and nucleoli will start to disappear. Both centrioles, these are the centrioles, will move towards the opposite poles of the cell. Spindle fibers, these are the spinal fibers will form among the centrioles. The next stage is metaphase 1. During metaphase 1, homologous chromosomes, these are the homologous chromosomes, are aligned at the equatorial plane. This is the equatorial plane, an imaginary line at the center of the cell. Each pair of homologous chromosome is tied to the spindle fiber at the centromere. If you still remember, this is the centromere. Right? The sister chromatids are still tied together because the centromere has not been separated, as you can see in the diagram. 
The next stage is error phase 1. During error phase 1, as you can see in the diagram, the spindle fiber becomes shorter. Why? Because it contracts. The spindle fiber contracts. When the spindle fiber contracts, it will pull each homologous chromosome to the opposite pole. So this one will come to this pole and this homologous chromosome will go to the other side. Now, each chromosome is still made up of a pair of sister chromatids tied to a central mirror and move as one unit. The last stage are the meiosis 1 is telophase 1. In telophase 1, the chromosomes arrive at the opposite pole of the cell. Each cell now contains a number of haploid chromosomes. If you still remember, just now at the beginning of the slide, you can see there are four chromosomes, but now at one pole of the cell, there are only two chromosomes. The spindle fiber will then disappear. You can see there is no spindle fiber in the diagram. Nucleoli and nuclear membrane, these are the nuclear membrane, start to reappear. Now, telophase 1 is followed by cytokinesis process that will produce two daughter cells. Each daughter cell now has a haploid number of chromosomes. 1, 2, 1, 2. If you still remember, at the beginning, there was four chromosomes. So the interface for meiosis 1 is usually short and DNA does not replicate during this interface. At the end of meiosis 1, we have two daughter cells. So the next stage under meiosis 2, I only take one daughter cell as an example. So now we go to prophase 2. In prophase 2, the nucleoli and the nuclear membrane start to disappear again. Each chromosome is made up of sister chromatids that are joined at the centromere. The spindle fiber, spindle fiber starts to form again. Now, metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes are arranged at random on the equatorial plane. Be careful, in metaphase 1, it was homologous chromosome align at the equatorial plane. But in matter phase 2, it is chromosome align at the equatorial plane. Each chromatid is tied to the spindle fiber at the centromere. Matter phase 2 will end when the centromere start to separate. Now is anaphase phase 2. In anaphase 2, centromere of the sister chromatids start to separate. This is the chromosome. This is the centromere and then it will start to separate. Each sister chromatid separates and move towards the opposite pole led by the centromere. You can see here, the centromere is being pulled by the spindle fiber. Each Sister chromatid at this stage is known as chromosome. So this one, we still call it as chromosome. The last stage under meiosis 2 is telophase 2. In telophase 2, the chromosomes already arrive at the pole of the cell. The spindle fibers disappear. The nuclear membrane and the nucleoli reappear. The number of chromosomes for each daughter cell is haploid as compared to the parent cell. As I told you just now, the parent cells, there are four chromosomes. Now, in daughter cells, there is only two chromosomes. Telophase 2 ends with the process of cytokinesis. Cytokinesis, if you still remember, is the division of cytoplasm. 
that will produce four daughter cells. In the diagram, you can only see two. But remember, just now, at the end of meiosis 1, we have two daughter cell produced. So, one daughter cell will produce two. The other one daughter cell will produce another two. So, total, there are four daughter cells produced at the end of meiosis 2. Now, each haploid cell contains half the number of chromosomes compared to the parent cell. The genetic content is also different from the diploid parent cell because of the crossing over during prophase 1. The haploid cell will then develop into gametes. We have come to the end of our today's lesson. So please take your quiz on the topic at your Google Classroom. And don't forget to like my video and to subscribe my channel. See you in the next biology video. Stay safe and bye!